this is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and today we are talking about Cyberpunk 2077, so let's get to it. Let's start off with my coverage plans. So day one, I will be streaming the game all while giving thoughts and impressions firsthand. Whether I continue to stream the game after day one will depend on many variables that I'm not going to get into right now. But please note, the stream will be 18 plus and not safe for work and not your usual PG-13 family friendly Firespark style that you're used to. And this is just mainly because I want to experience the game as the developers intended it, and I want to stream it as such as well. And this will most likely be followed up with family-friendly, safe-for-work video guides on the channel as I learn the game. Now let's talk about some concerns I have. I've been reading and watching lots of reviews for Cyberpunk, many of which talk about a glaring amount of bugs that just destroy immersion and break the game, causing you to reload saves, restart the game, and more. Jeff Grubb from Venture Beat stated, But the game is also undeniably buggy. I have a high tolerance for occasional funny glitches. I have high expectations, but getting a simulation of a world to behave is too high even for me. But in my time with Cyberpunk, I saw objects float, vehicles disappear, and characters drive while standing up. Also, sorting items doesn't work properly, and I couldn't get the context-sensitive stealth takedown to activate after dropping behind a certain enemy. But that's not all. Many other large companies had similar reports. Haley from GameSpot reported, It also bears a mention, Cyberpunk 2077 is phenomenally buggy. I played a pre-release build that was updated during the review period, and there's a day one patch planned as well. But the scale of technical issues is too large to reasonably expect immediate fixes. I encountered some kind of bug on every mission I went on, from more common funnier ones like characters randomly T-posing to several complete crashes. I didn't notice much of an improvement after the update either. In a very late game, very important fight, the game froze on me twice. I ended up taking a break out of frustration before attempting and finally succeeding the third time. And there are many more just like this. Now don't get me wrong, there's also a ton, and I mean a ton, of glowing reviews for Cyberpunk 2077. The issue is, many of you know I am very hard on games, and I tend to align myself more with these harsher reviews. I believe if a game is released in a non-early access released state, aside from the occasional random bug here and there, the gameplay experience should be rather flawless. Even more so if the game comes with a hefty price tag. The developer is selling you a product, and we should expect that product to work. If you bought a toaster, and it only toasted one side of your bread most of the time, you'd most likely take it back because it's broken. However, if it occasionally gave you a bit of an uneven toast on only one slice of your bread, you'd most likely overlook that. And that's true with most products. And I believe we shouldn't treat games any differently. They're a product. They should work as intended and as promised. Another issue that I saw creeping up in reviews more often than not is that the game, while pretty, is rather limiting on its interactions in the world. I've seen it referred to as one big set dressing, and as you explore that dressing, you start to lose believability. I think this has a lot to do with CD Projekt Red and all their hype. Because the thing is that pretty much all games are like this. This isn't really anything new. A great example of recent games I've played are Watch Dogs Legion and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Both have massive, beautiful worlds. But in Watch Dogs, I saw people go in and out of buildings all the time, in doors that were not accessible to me. You see someone come out of a building, you expect to be able to open the door and go in that building just as they came out of it, but you can't. You walk up to it and it's just a set. In Assassin's Creed, there are villagers all over, most of which are just props. I could go on and on through recent video game history and point out examples, but I'm not. You get the idea. The issue here is I feel like CD Projekt Red hyped and promised more, and that is a problem. That's actually a really big problem because many people are going to expect that more and not get it, and that's going to hurt the game overall. But I'm going to go into this game with an open mind. There's a day one patch planned, and I hope that will take care of many of the larger immersion and game-breaking bugs. 
because those are the biggest threat to the game for me personally. I can easily get past a world that is just a large set dressing, provided I can get lost in the story and the characters. What I can't handle is having to stop and reload a game because the UI is stuck on the screen or my BFF is T-posing in the passenger seat of the car next to me. After numerous delays and them telling us they're fixing crap like that and that's why they need the additional time, I expect better. Especially if I'm coughing up 60 bucks to play this game. If Cyberpunk was not ready, they should have never announced a release date for it. They should have completed it and made sure it was the product we expect it to be and then gave it a release date and released it. Now I know games like The Witcher got released, they had bugs, and CD Projekt Red is apparently a solid company for making sure they keep up with their games. But let me ask you this. Why should we buy a game on a promise that the game will one day be the product that we paid for if it's not being released is early access because that's literally what early access is. But who knows, maybe the day one patch will clear up a lot of the major issues and it'll be a solid, fantastic gameplay experience. I don't know. But what I do know is you will be able to find out during my live stream and I'll make sure that I at least put out a review of this game that will be PG-13 and work safe for all of you out there who are on the fence about buying it. So make sure you subscribed and hit that bell so you can be notified when I do that. But they have hyped this game for years now and I'm very concerned that no matter what they have done, it will not be able to live up to the ungodly amount of hype that they have built for it. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments section because as always, I'm eager to hear and read your all's thoughts. I always enjoy reading the varied opinions down in the comments section. It gives me a wider perspective on things. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my elite crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.